Hey, good Saturday morning, everybody, and welcome here to Surfside, California. It is a beautiful morning. It's low tide, as you can see, but the ocean is calm. It's perfect for the big surf fishing tournament that is taking place here today and tomorrow. Remember, you can sign up still, and the high tide is later on this morning. That's when the little fishies like to bite sometimes, so keep that in mind. And remember, if you want information on that, all you got to do is go sign up right now, today and tomorrow. You can do that at Big Fish Bait and Tackle, at Island Fishing Tackle, at 22nd Street Landing in San Pedro, and of course, at the Redondo Rod and Gun Club. Good morning to you all. I hope you are all having a wonderful start to your weekend. It is always great to spend time with you, and I deeply appreciate you spending time with me. We're going to get into so much. We're going to talk about that bluefin tuna in Ensenada in San Diego. We're going to talk about that bite up in the Channel Islands, sea bass and halibut. We saw some excellent fishing for the pride again out of 22nd Street Landing. No surprise there. And so much more is going on. You know what time it is, my friends. It is time for the morning briefing. Good morning. Oh, I thank you for allowing me to indulge in that nectar from the gods. I really appreciate it very, very much. All right. We are watching situations for you all over the place. You know, it's becoming more and more obvious to me. And I'm starting to, you know, slowly but surely remember those kinds of years with cold water that produced albacore. I know. I'll, I'll drop it right there. These kinds of years, overcast years, it feels like that right now. I remember in Redondo, you wouldn't even think about catching a yellowtail until the fall in those kinds of years. You wouldn't even think of going yellowtail fishing until September, at least locally up in the bay back in the day when you had this kind of cold water event. So what is happening right now is yesterday, you know, we were excited. There was some really great fishing going on. And then yesterday it slowed down. It's going to be foot on the gas, comes off, hit the brakes. What happened? Foot back on the gas. Same thing, you know, kind of inconsistent. That's what we're dealing with right now. These inconsistencies that are typical of this cold water. When the water finally gets up to the point where like I want to say 63, 64, then you're going to see more consistency to our bites and it's going to get really, really good. But in the meantime, we're on a roller coaster ride and it just adds to the enigma and kind of the fun of the whole sport fishing game. So some days you're going to get them, some days you're not. Some boats are going to get them on particular days and lots of boats are not. That is where we are right now. I can see some surf fishing guys down here. Hopefully they are doing well. All right. Blackfin sport fishing with a couple of bluefin tuna that they turned into sashimi down there in Ensenada. Pongeros continue to work out there and trying to catch bluefin tuna. Inconsistent down that neck of the woods also. They're dealing with that cold water. Sometimes as cool as 58 degrees offshore, 60 degrees. So it is chilly up in the San Diego zone. We're seeing like 62, 63 degree water. So once again, it is just is not up to the point where you see that consistency. Bluefin tuna, as a matter of fact, like to bite better in that warmer water. I've seen it and you've seen it this year, biting in the cooler water. But remember, it's been these spurts, you know, boom, it looks like we're off to the races, nothing will slow us down, and then the bottom drops out. So we'll just have to wait and see. Ensenada starting to catch a few fish. Pacifica, day and a half trip, 47 bluefin, a lot of that in the 40 to 80 pound class. Nothing wrong with that kind of a trip. The Polaris Supreme on a three day trip had some decent early bluefin tuna fishing going on. A couple of guys last night had some fish, but most guys struggled with it again. It's been really tough. Now, at night, you want to fish those, I want to say, 250 to 330 gram jigs. Scott Buchert was out on the Aztec here recently and uh, provided us with some video. And boy, I got to tell you, he said that that 250 to 330 gram jig was working best of all. Those SK lures were good. Incidentally, Scott said, please give a shout out to the guys on the Aztec for me, Morgan, Jeff, Max, Greg. And he said, Brian, creating culinary masterpieces in the galley, did a great job on board the Aztec. Scott said, fantastic crew on that rig. So that is really, really good stuff. So down in San Diego, we are starting to see more eyeball fish. Those are fish for you guys who are new to the game that you actually see. Maybe a fish jumps out of the water, maybe a puddler, fish puddling on the surface, a color spot where you see the color shining and glimmering at the top of the ocean. 
seeing more and more of that, which is evidence that there's fish around. But for some reason, man, it lacks consistency on the bite. I surmise it's water temperature, but there is a thousand possible explanation as to why this stuff has been so inconsistent. We'll just have to keep our eyes on it. Hopefully it's going to kick into gear. Same thing on the kelp paddy yellowtail down there. Most of those kelp paddy yellows are 5 to 10 pounds. You do get some up to 15 every once in a while, even one or two bigger than that. The San Diego yesterday had two bluefin. So they're a boat that leaves in the morning, comes back in the evening. They had 10 yellowtail, 8 bonita, sea watch, 11 guys, 26 yellowtail, and 3 Spanish jacks. Spanish jacks are a cool water kind of phenomenon. We see them in these cold albacore type years. So who knows? Maybe just another omen of long fins to come. Of course, I am dreaming out loud. Those yellows on the kelps, when you find them, if you're lucky enough to find that right kelp, there's a lot of dry kelps. There's a lot of kelps that are holding and fish are just uncooperative. They don't want to bite. So I would fish a little bit lighter line and definitely fluorocarbon. 25 pound you can even drop down to 20 that'll be the time you hook a 60 pound bluefin though but you can drop down to lighter line and go with a good hot bait and fluorocarbon www.opsinusa.com put in fa at checkout that is really the best way to get it done if you see those yellows and they're fired up you're on a trip where they're just chewing the paint off the boat you can grab your heavier stick and toss a bait with a 40 pound and you should be able to get a bite on that so our situation in san diego right now and if anything changes we will of course let you know here during the daytime it is very inconsistent and overall kind of slow again so up we go down we go it's been that kind of a situation incidentally i'll see many of you at the cca event later today they have a ton of great raffle prizes it's for a great cause a better cause i can't think of it's about our access to the Eastern Pacific Ocean, being able to fish. And it's more than just fishing, as I have described to you so very many times. It is about spending time with family, bonding with your kids, showing the kid the great outdoors, opening new doors to other types of jobs and so much more to kids. It is such an important part of life. And I hope I see you there at the CCA event a little bit later today. All right, let's uh, focus in on the pride for a moment. And we've got to focus in on a kid named Joel Lopez. I say kid because I'm so darn old. Joel is a great kid. I met him over at Island Fishing Tackle in Carson, California. Great guy. He's going to get married this Sunday. This Sunday, Joel's getting married. Happy, happy whatever it is. Congratulations, Joel. I'm so happy for you. So what does Joel do? He's going to get married. He's going sea bass fishing with his dad on board the Pride. And he thinks before he jumps on board, man, I remember when I was a kid and I caught a white sea bass with my dad. What a great memory that was. Wouldn't it be something if, yeah, you guessed it, limits a white sea bass on the Pride. Dad and Joel had their sea bass, had a great time together. Perfect way to go into Sunday when he's going to get married. I can't think of a more magnificent way to celebrate pride limits the sea bass they had a whole bunch of other stuff to go along with it nothing wrong with that out at san clemente island we catch those big yellows 15 to 30 pounds sometimes even bigger than that from time to time and then other times we don't thunderbird looked at some yellows had a nice halibut for elimbo yes elimbo with his first halibut. Congratulations, nice catch there. They had whitefish, rockfish, all kinds of stuff. No forkies out there. Uh, same thing on the Fury out of Dana War Sword Fishing. Really good fishing. And, you know, I'm just, sometimes we focus too much on the game fish, the yellows and that type of stuff. Really, I mean, everybody's going home with a lot of great eating fish, and there is nothing wrong with that. So that is fantastic for the boys looking at Clemente. Same thing at Catalina Island. We've seen some flurries of yellowtail. A couple days ago, the pursuit had nine, uh, followed up by the native sun. I think had three or four yellows, hooked 12. And then yesterday, for the most part, guys were just looking at the yellows, catching shallow water fish, you know, some sheep's head, some whitefish, some rockfish, stuff like that. Nothing wide open, but still beautiful day on the water and a lot of fun out there at Catalina Island. I should mention that on the new Seaforth, they had a couple of yellows yesterday. That's the half-day boat, and they were nice ones, man. I mean, like 25-pound 
Forkies, that is a big grade of fish. And then they filled in with the rockfish and that kind of stuff. Nothing wrong with that. Up there in the Channel Islands, seemed like our sea bass bite was a little bit off yesterday. Also, I don't know, maybe the grunion have them all screwed up. There will be another grunion run on Southern California beaches tonight, tomorrow night, and the next night. And then it is fini for this particular run. Sometimes that gets the halibut in the surf biting pretty well. Back to the Channel Islands. And uh, let's see, we had the gray light. Six guys, five white sea bass, one short of limits. Pretty darn good. Pardon me. Five halibut, two white sea bass. So they were four short of limits there. The Aloha Spirit, only two people on board this trip. It's Dean and Candy. They charter the Aloha Spirit on a regular basis. They become family with the Sean Stewart and his family. And they were out there. They did have limits of white sea bass, two white sea bass. And they also had all kinds of whitefish and rockfish and all kinds of other species fishing on the light bass type gear really had a lot of fun dean and candy congratulations island fox eight halibut so we continue to pick away at those flatties and the sea bass and who knows they might flare up and bite like crazy again if you listen to tucker mccombs on here the great captain of the endeavor out of ventura harbor sport fishing he was explaining that the sea bass during this time of the year are kind of squirrely. They're moving around. you got to drive around. you got to try to get on top of them. When you do, a lot of times they will bite. Once again, the Californian is the half-day boat out of Ventura Harbor sword fishing. Tomorrow, Sunday, kids fish free. you got a kid 12 and under. They go for free with a paid adult. So you should take advantage of that. Looks like nice weather and really excellent rock fishing up there in that neck of the woods. All right, CCA event later today. Still time to sign up for the great surf fishing event and attend the banquet at the Redondo Rod and Gun Club tomorrow. That will be 3 p.m. on Sunday. I'll be there, and I'll be looking forward to seeing you all. And, of course, I'll see you in just a little bit at the CCA event. As always, it's a pleasure to spend time with you, my friends. Good morning. Have a great day. I'll see you a little bit later today, and I can't thank you enough for all your great support. Have a great one, my friends. He looked off his balcony in Mazatlan, Sinaloa, Mexico this morning and saw this incredible sight. Whales slapping their tails playfully on the ocean surface and sending spray everywhere. Before long, a crowd had gathered to watch this unique spectacle of nature. Hartley said these whales have never been this close before and sat back and enjoyed the show. Thanks for sharing, Ted. We really appreciate it. Thank you for making one of my goals come true about being on the morning briefing. Keep up the good work. Oh, nice, fish. Nice. Nice. Former Los Angeles Kings trainer Pete Demers caught this 100-pound bluefin tuna on 40-pound test in 20 minutes using the rail rod pipe. Pipe allows you to stand up straight while fighting your fish and makes the battle much easier. Up there would be awesome. And we'll get a couple of rides back into the underground. Copious amounts of rockfish. That is the voice of Tim Marquez. Copious amounts of rockfish on the American Angler. That looks great. Now they are headed toward the Bluefin Tuna Grounds to try to get a night bite tonight. We'll keep you in touch this with the sport fish. I'm checking in for my buddy Philip. Look at these tuna we're getting on deck here. Beautiful grade. Happy group of passengers. Hey, guys, say, what do you say? Hey. They're biting. Yeah. Pegasus Sport Fishing. Checking in our buddy Philip Friedman. When the water kind of started to mellow out after El Nino, the sea bass fishing kind of got really good again up here. I'm seeing just as much fish as I have the last few years. It's squirrely. It's moving around a lot, hard to find, but I'm seeing volume when we are seeing it. When it kind of settles in and does its thing, it's going to be really good, and I think just as good or better than, you know, A lot of guys don't use the, the sound on the sonar See, at the islands. It's just loud, but I, I leave the sound on. You get so used to hearing it, you, you hear what they sound like on the sonar. Because a lot of times you'll see them, the sea bass sound different than that. It's it easier for us to distinguish what, what we're uh, stopping on by the way it sounds, not, not necessarily by the halibut's way it looks. tremendous. Um, seems like the halibut fishing is really good right now at the local islands. Um, there's boats doing really well on that in the shallow water. 
I think the water's a little bit too cool and a little bit green up at Rosa for the halibut just yet. But I think, you know, like a couple weeks, maybe on this next moon, the halibut fishing is going to probably pick up up there too. Halibut fishing's always been tremendous at the Northern Channel Islands. And then uh, when the water warms up, we also at times have really good yellow tail. Probably 90% of the time we find sea bass, it's going to be on the sonar first. You know, the sonar technology has gotten better. Before, um, with the older sonars, the sweep was a lot slower. Yeah. So it was hard for us to see the sea bass, you know, because the, the sweep was so slow. So where we're looking around for a school on the sonar, stopping on them real quick. We don't catch them, then you try to get on the school again. It's a lot of, lot of looking around and a lot of hoping to get lucky and get on that, that school. 90% of the time in the, the Channel Islands, uh, up this way for sea bass and, and for halibut, we're using live squid. So it's live squid on a dropper loop. Usually we use uh, those Aki Twist, owner Aki Twist J-hooks, yep. or the Blacktail makes an Aki, Aki Twist, um, pretty much the same thing. Depending on the depth, anywhere from a 4 to an 8 ounce sinker, and 30 to 40 pound test. Uh, we usually recommend fluorocarbon. Sometimes it's slider fishing, usually when the water warms up a little bit, we're catching them on sliders and lightheads. But the latest thing that, that's been working for us and other boats is the, the fluke. Especially when squid's a little bit less accessible, hard for us to find the squid. Um, you still have an opportunity to catch a sea bass on uh, the, the white fluke. So I like to just go with uh, six swipes on each side of my blade before every bag. Real important first though to make sure you have a clean surface, clean working area, no, uh, no debris, no scales, guts on your blade, no uh, scales on your stone. And then I just do six swipes, uh, one on each side at a time. Everyone has a different angle. Mine's probably about 20 degrees. How many fish do you fillet before you sharpen the knife again? I sharpen my knife at the start of every bag. Doesn't matter if it's you know a full 20 fish or just a few fish, it's always important to keep your knife super sharp.